Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're taking a look at Tao Drum. There is a lot to say about Tao Drum. It can do a ton. It's a drum sampler, so you'll load your samples in here and it will be basically just like the hardware. It will be a, a drum machine. And let's go ahead and you know dive right in. I wanna show you the workflow, some of the cool features it has to offer. So to start off, one of the things you're first gonna be confronted with is how do you load the content because you may notice that when you download it, it actually doesn't download the content. Uh, what you have to do is you come over here to this cog, you set a file path, you click download factory presets, this will download it. And then you put that download, you extract it and you put it where this file path is. And this will load it uh, so that Tau drum can see it. So it's a bit different of a process. It's a straightforward process, but it's one that is different. So that's how you will do that as probably the first hurdle. Uh, you'll come across not that it's not that you come across a lot of hurdles but that is something that uh i wish was a little more clear to me so now that we have this all set up we can come over and begin to load samples in so by default we'll probably want to check out some kits so we've got a bunch of nice kits here and that, that sample content that you get has a whole load of stuff in it you know, much more than just the kits uh, but i'm pretty much just going to stop at the kits for this video so pretty standard, you're able to, you know, click, you can hear the samples. If you want to recolor something, you can right click it, recolor, and then click off and it will be that new color. Uh, you can move things around however you want. There are 32 pads as an option if you want 32, or you could just stick with the 16. Now that's viewable. Uh, there's this little one slash two switches between the banks of pads. So the, the, the full 32 are always available to you. It's just... Um, if you want to have them all visible or not. So now that we've seen this, how hard is it to load your own samples into this thing? So let's just get a blank pad in view, click drag, boom. So really, really easy, you can click it. If you click on these cog icons, not these cogs, these like little sliders, mixer effects. This is the edit page. So this is what it looks like. This is the sample edit page. Um, on each sample pad, you can have a round robin. So right now, this is what we have, but I can click over here and duplicate, remove, or add, drag a new one on here. Now, they play at the same time. I can have another and another. And if, so this is layers. If I want them now to, you know, round robin, I can come over here to mode, click round robin cycle, and they'll cycle through, which could be a cool effect. Or you could go to random, so it'll just be like, who knows what. And in here, you've got some abilities to change the pitch of samples, um, stretch samples out with some different algorithms, normalize samples, basic sample editing, remove, not remove, <laughs> reverse samples, or even loop them. So pretty nifty, uh, kind of what you would expect out of a drum sampler. And then you've got up here your amplitude envelope, your filter, as well as your mapping settings. So in the map settings, there's this really cool area for the analog and timing. So this is like a pitch variation. And in order to show this, let me go back. Going back took me a while to get used to. It's this close button up here at the top. I don't know why I kept throwing me off. I kept looking pretty much anywhere but here. But yeah, you click that, that's how you go backwards. And let's get something with a tone on it. That kind of has, I mean, that has a tone, but there we go. That one's like gonna be really obvious. So if we go ahead, we turn up analog. The pitch moves around. And we could do some neat things with the timing. So if I come in here, there it is. And we'll go ahead and we'll put down some eighth notes. The jitter is really, really nice. Um, it, it basically, it moves it around in time. If, it, if you're familiar with hardware, then you know what jitter is. There you go. That's just straight up on the money. So you see, we've got some variation in time now. This is quite aggressive. <laughs> you know you can have it just be really really wild so very very cool here let's go over some of the modulation capabilities uh they're very very nice so if i come down here to say uh, the kick and let's write in a quick groove so that we have a groove to work with so i'll put down the kick we'll do uh the snare we'll do one of these and then i need a hat there we go Boom, boom, boom. Okay, 
So let's go over to the kick here and go into its edit. I only want to see 16 pads. I like the bigger pads, kind of nice. And okay, so we have our sample here and you know, some sample settings. You've got some group settings down here as well. We've already taken a look at, at some of what this is. Uh, you have an amplitude envelope. So if I want to like, you know, lose the transient on this kick, very easy with an ADSR. Or we could bring it back. You've got a filter. This is a low pass. We could open this up. Bring it down. Bring the resonance up. Standard filtery things. But now let's say you want to start controlling things. Uh, this is nice, but you really want to start moving things around. Well, you've got a few things. You've got some LFOs, some envelopes, actually two extra envelopes, a spline editor, which this is fantastic for loops, and then the area to actually connect everything up. So this is the matrix area. So let's start with the LFO. Let's say that we want this LFO to move this cutoff and let's have it move the resonance as well. And so in the LFO, pretty standard LFO, but there's two cool options. There is a sample and hold option and there is a noise option. So let's use the noise option. I'm not gonna sync it or do anything else that's like, you know, any fancier. The noise will be fine. This is just gonna be crazy. Let's hook it up to the cutoff and we'll go over to the effects page, not the effects page, the matrix page. In the matrix page, instead of velocity, I'm going to connect this LFO. We're gonna use the unipolar mode and we're gonna give it a high modulation depth. So now this cutoff will just move all over the place randomly as it plays. This is gonna create some really crazy distortion. Let's also connect it. So you can hear here, there's some crunch in there now. That's this moving all over the place. The, the kick is a very short-lived kick, and which is why you don't hear it doing anything totally crazy. Uh, we could do the same effect. In fact, let's do it. Where's that? Where's the hat? Which, which one do you use the hat? There you are. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna also connect it to the LFO. We're gonna keep it unipolar as well. We'll connect it to the cutoff. We'll make this cutoff a low pass. Uh, we'll bring this down. So we want it to be moving up and down to give it just a little more oomph. I think I may have actually moved it all the way up to basically turn it off in the other on the kick. That's neither here nor there. So let's go ahead and now take this. We'll set it to noise, give it a high rate. And in the matrix page, we've given it a high modulation depth. So now, that's what I basically did to the kick. Now on the kick, I, I moved the cutoff all the way up. So the effect is less, I don't, it's not even on if it's all the way up. No, no, it's only partially up. So you do get it. But if I were to move this like all the way down, they both have this like kind of crazy modulation on them. We could also give this modulation to the resonance. And give it a depth and away you go right so these are okay i'm going to go ahead and just dial these both back and move the cutoff a ways up so it's a lot more subtle and not so crazy i also like the idea of sort of having the kick move around subtly over time uh with this let's take a look over here we've got an envelope i'm not going to spend really any time here i just want to point out there are two adsr envelopes they're overlaid on each other they do exactly what you think they'll do that you know they're envelopes and you connect them in the matrix area so nothing like super crazy or special about the envelopes but if they weren't there that'd be like you know a, a glaring missing thing <laughs> so they're there just like you would expect them to be what's really cool is this mod envelope so to show off the mod envelope i'm going to load up an entirely new tau drummer let's let's lose this one and in this one i'm going to go into the drum loops so i'm going to grab some drum loops okay that's a, that's a good drum loop i'm going to just load this up here into this first slot we'll go into the edit so here we've got a drum loop and if i were to just put it down i'm going to ignore all the timing stuff you can do stuff with the timing for now i'm just going to look at this as just a, a way to to play it and you could come into the mod envelope and this will make more sense in the context of slices. Uh, but what you can do is you can go ahead and you say, let's say that we have this envelope and every time, whoops, let's uh, bring this back down here. And we want it to sort of have these swells on specific beats. Maybe it's a filter and we want to filter out in this sort of 
And we, we could do stuff more complicated than a sine wave, right? Because this is a spline editor. So maybe we want this shape. And we'll have it control a low pass. And so the beats that are low will be low. And then we'll have it turn on the low pass at these other specific beats. So now we'll go over to the matrix. We'll connect the mod envelope over to the cutoff. Now we don't want to mess with the tuning, just the cutoff. By the way, this list is like everything you can connect it to. Uh, if you were wondering, like what is possible, that's what's possible. So notably in here is the sample start and loop start. Uh, this These are very handy for changing where things begin. You can get these start up and slow down effects with that um, by using an LFO and perhaps modulating it. Uh, you could automate some controls to, as well to get similar effects. Uh, but anyways, what, what we will have now is those beats will be emphasized. Now it's restarting, you might be going, why is it restarting? It's because I'm triggering the sample right now with a piece of MIDI. If I click, uh, we go to the sample. It'll play through the whole thing. Sometimes this could be a bit of a pain because you want it to stop. So if it is playing, you've accidentally triggered it, you can just hit your DAWs, you know, kill everything button, the stop button, and it will stop. Uh, okay, so that is a little bit on the loops. Something that's also kind of cool with the loops is in the slice area, you can set a threshold. It'll show you where it's going to slice things. And say you like this, uh, you can go ahead and click that you want this to be sliced. So we could go ahead and say slice it. It'll slice it for you. Now here, you can use the ability, you can put these on pads. So if I go to apply to pads, this will overwrite whatever you've done. So if we close this. Now what's different about slices is if you go into the slice, you'll see everything is still here, but it has this one like slice. Uh, when you click on it though, it'll play it like it's it's got everything on it. This is, don't worry, it doesn't have everything on it. It's just looking at this one piece. Uh, it confused me at first, but don't worry. <laughs> It's just the one piece. So if you want to edit that one piece, you can, but it sort of uses the, I believe what white does this is because it's, it's using, it doesn't make a bunch of individual samples. It looks at the original. That's what I, I why I think it works this way. Uh, but yeah, so very, very cool. Let's say that you want it sliced like this and you also want to just drag it out as a loop that would normally play. You can go ahead and come over here to drag and drop MIDI, drop it on there. And there you go. Tau Drum has a sampling function built in as well, meaning it can actually record input. And in FL Studio, this is a bit different than in other DAWs because FL Studio is just sort of fundamentally built differently. So this will vary and depend on your DAW. But in FL Studio, you'll load this up as an insert and we'll go ahead and turn this on. We are gonna go ahead and just come into a sample. Uh, so I'm, I've already kind of given this a bit of an experiment, uh, but we, if we come in, we'll go to our first group and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit record. It's this record tab here at the end. If I hit this, it'll start recording. I'll go ahead and hit an input. And it is recording what's coming in right now. So now if we hit play, stop recording. So we've got our sample. We can go ahead and save this and begin to use it internally if this is something that you'd like to do. Uh, kind of a cool thing, the ability to record, not something very common, especially in a VST uh, sampler. So very nice. To wrap things up, let's look at the effects. So if we come into the effects tab, we've got a compressor, some clipping abilities, some saturation and whatnot, and then a lo-fi effect. So if we go ahead and just play this little groove I have, we can bring the sample rate way down and the jitter way up. Bring the bits, make it real lo-fi, give some hiss up, give it some clipping, saturation. And then to top it all off, there is a compressor. So there's a lot here to do. There are a lot of possibilities. I didn't even go into some of the grouping things you can do. You can also in the mix tab, uh, set your outputs. You can set these out um, down here as well. Uh, where are you? Output. 
and you can change the loop behavior. I mean, you can make some really complicated stuff just within Tau Drum by itself. And then you can send this out to process the mix, which is gonna vary from DAW to DAW. So in FO Studio, you actually have to come into the cog, go to processing, map the outputs, and then turn the ones on that you want to use. Uh, so if you want pads to come out in, in specific groups, maybe you've got pads, you want those to all come out the same output, or if you want every pad to have its own output, uh, FL will only go up to 16. So you actually have to use uh, two Tau drums if you want to use like a full 32. Uh, but yeah, it's got these extra abilities. There's a, there's a whole lot more. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the capabilities of the plugin, uh, what's possible with it. I did sort of focus feature heavy on this because... Right now, there's just not really any videos except the one on the official channel that go into, you know, what's possible here and, and really dive into, you know, what you can do. Uh, so maybe next time we could dive into uh, actually using it and creating some beats and things if that's something that there's some interest for. Let me know down in the comments. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.